Shalom, it's Mariah Aliza with Mariah Shalee Village. And today I'm shooting this video to share, I guess, uh, a culmination of four, has it been four years? Maybe two and a half years of writing and rhetoric and what we can now do in narrative writing after going through their four books. So I have my son with me here again. Say hi, y'all. Shalom. Shalom. So earlier this summer, if you remember, I published a video featuring um, the writing and rhetoric curriculum and I was pretty much sharing where we were at up until this point, but I also shared the entire um, program was 12 books and that we had completed the first four. And I went through each book and I was sharing how he progressed from book to book to book and how satisfied I was as both a mom and an educator with what he was able to do book to book to book, but as well as after it was over. So the first four books pretty much are going to focus on narrative writing. And there's different types of narrative writing. There's myths, legends, bios, fables. Am I missing another one? I think that's it. Um, so what I wanted to do at the end of the fourth book, after narrative writing was all done, which tends to be the first type of writing children learn how to do, I wanted to assess his narrative writing skills. So I chose to have him write a biographical essay in order to do that. Um, if you recall our lit debrief video, we went through all of the books that he read and then I specifically said I was going to wait um, for the Bob Marley video. I mean video, for the Bob Marley book so that I could um, share more about it in this video. So that's what um, I'm going to do. So let me get started with how we did that. So first, I gave him a rubric and we went through what... Um, the biographical essay should include and for the most part I took the pieces um, of the curriculum that he was exposed to in the writing and rhetoric program right so you read through your rubric this pretty much looked familiar to you and I'm gonna go through it with you as well okay and then um, I'm an educator and as well as a smile but I also asked two other educators um, to read his essay and score his work according to the rubric so that we would have like a balanced view. One, he's at the point in his education where he needs to hear from more than just me. Um, he's rising seventh grader, so he needs to hear more from just me, especially in writing. Um, so I asked those educators, those professionals who have degrees in education um, to kind of score his work along with me, right? So this is we're, he's going to read his essay and then we are going to score together. So I guess I'm sharing this video to one, give you an idea of his skill after those four books of writing and rhetoric, and to two, have a record of where he's currently writing at. So here is the um, rubric. You want to read the categories for them? Ideas and content, mm -hmm. organization, voice, word choice, sentence fluency. Conventions. Right. So in ideas and in con in ideas and content, I'm looking for um, how well the writer knows the topic, how well he spoke about like the early life, the significant events, the contributions, character traits, impact on others, intro and conclusion are included and the details are relevant. In organization, I'm looking for um, that it's carefully organized. He has varied transitions, which we work really hard on transitioning our paragraphs, right? Using those transition words and phrases. Um, that he, it grabs the reader's attention. The conclusion works well. The work cited is included. And we worked on work cited this past school year in voice. I'm looking for his personality, which his personality comes through in whatever he writes. Um, I'm looking for, like, that his voice is lively and confident. Word choice. He has strong words, vivid pictures in my mind when I read, sentence fluency, different types of sentences, links, um, and variety, and the flow is enjoyable for me to read. And conventions, he has little or no errors um, in punctuation, spelling, and grammar, and that the writing is easy to read as well. Bob Marley, music legend from the past. Bob Marley was a Rastafarian songwriter and composer from Jamaica, traveling many places to send his bright message to others. Since his faith in Jah was so strong, writing spiritual music came easy for him. Though with every great musician are great obstacles. But with Jah, Marley was able to rise and overcome. This is what makes him the absolute best reggae musician, not only in Jamaica, but the whole world. Without doubt, 
reggae, and ja paved a long road for his career in music. Nesta Robert Marley was born in Kingston, the capital of Jamaica. This little wonder made Sadella Booker and Captain Norville Marley parents for the first time. Nestor Marley grew up without a good dad. His father was constantly leaving and rarely returned home before sunset. Over time, this created space for Nestor to practice his mother's beliefs and teachings. As Nestor grew older, his mom encouraged the thought that his dad still loved him. But Nestor thought otherwise. Sadella was not very supportive of her son after a while. So he asked to leave for a school where he could meet other kids. His mom saved up tuition and sent him to Stephanie Primary in 1985. When Nestor returned home from school, he heard the terrifying news of his father's death. The young boy never cared more about his father until he died. Several years passed and it was time for Marley to make his own decisions. He met an old guy that taught him about Ja and the Rastafarian faith. Soon after, Bob Marley converted to Rastafarianism. He decided to travel to America for the first time, which turned out to be one of the biggest regrets, regrets in his life. In the States, he changed his name from Nestor Robert Marley to Bob Marley. With enough time wandering around the States, he met John Bundrick, an American music composer and DJ. He allowed Marley to live in his home in exchange for helping him with his career. As they grew, people joined their small group. Soon enough, a band formed, and they were known official. They were officially known as the Whalers. The band made a few hits on some popular songs, such as Apache and The Crawlers. After a while, Marley was kicked from the composer's home, which created big problems for the band. Once this happened, Marley looked at America in a different way. He took a break from the group idea. Bart Marley returned to his solo music. Marley stopped writing spiritual music and started writing love songs. It worked perfectly because he was looking for a lover. In 1966, Bob Marley married the love of his life. Her name was Alpharita Constantia. She helped Marley perform and arrange his solos. Eventually, with help from his new wife, he started earning big money, mainly due to, mainly due to a few top hits like One Love, Redemption Song, and No Woman, No Cry. He won several awards and honors from these three songs alone. He became fa famous without the Whalers and, be and made a great name for himself. Several times during his life, he acknowledges how he could have never done it without praying to Ja first. He and his wife, he he and his wife were very pleased with the money he brought home from his music. They decided to have kids together. They had five kids named Stephanie, Ziggy, Sharon, Sadella, and Stephen. They both were living the American dream until Bob started having affairs. Though his wife did not divorce him, it wasn't very easy to win her heart over again. After all of Bob's ongoing affairs, he was diagnosed with a serious disease known as melanoma. The spread of melanoma to his lungs and brain caused his treacherous death on February 10, 1981. Bob Marley was buried in a Jamaican cemetery and later was moved to Ethiopian burial grounds. Rita Marley requested that his final burial would be in Ethiopia because it was referred to as the birthplace of Rastafarianism. The great music legend died at the age of 36 with 12 living children still alive to hold his name dear. Lots of lives changed because of Bob Marley's music. His songs motivated people to not only be great but to have faith but to have faithful maturity and job. Though his legend though this legend Left the world too soon, he accomplished many achievements before he died. Not only were people inspired by him, he was also inspired by them. Bob Marley definitely created a new way to praise and worship his mighty one, and his words will always be here to prove it. Okay, so I have not revealed scores to him yet, but I'm going to do that, and I'm not going to share um, who is who. So I'm just going to say... Uh, rubric one. So in rubric one, and then you tell me if you agree. Don't look. Okay. So this score is so the most points you can order is twenty four, and so this score is a twenty out of twenty four. So now I want you to look. So this particular score 
so that your ideas and content was here. So let me, one is beginning, two is developing, three is capable, and four is exemplary. So in ideas and content, what'd you get? What did she score you? Three. Three. So capable, that's good. In organization, what'd you get? Four. Four. So exemplary. You agree? So far? That looks good? Yes. Okay. Voice, what'd you get? Three. Three. You agree? Yeah. What do you think it should be? You think your voice is four? Okay, let's see if another score I gave you a four. Um, so three says most of the time the writer's voice and personality shows up in the writing, where four says personality comes through well. Okay, so word choice, what'd you get? Four. Four, exemplary, you agree with that? Yes. Of course you agree with a four. Okay, sentence fluency. And you just read your, you read your essay before we got started, so you, it should be in your mind. Uh, what'd you get? Three. Three, what'd you think? Yes, okay. And then last in conventions, you got what? Three. Three, you agree? That you have few? Yes. Yes, okay. I, I, I agree with that too. So all together, that's a 20. So a 20 out of 24, which is probably like an 83 or 4 or so. Okay. So that was a 20 out of 24. Number two says ideas and content what do you have four a four so it was like let's see let me keep them both going it was like this one yep okay organization four four agree voice no so you got a three again in voice so there might be some validity to that word choice no no, don't say no. Yeah, you got to read your score first. Oh, three. Three, and you're saying you don't agree with that. No. Okay, sentence fluency? Three. Three? I agree. Okay, and then conventions? Four. Four, agree? The other one, the other score gave you a three. No. I think it should be three. You think it should be three. Okay, so this one was 21 out of 24. So this one, he got one more point than the other one. And then the last one, and then I'll reveal who's who. The last one, let's see where you're at. All right, ideas and content, what do you have? Four. Four. Organization? Four. Okay, you agree with those, even in the other ones. Vo voice? Four. So this person gave you what you wanted. Voice, four. This is not me. And then word choice? Four. Four. You agree? Yes. Okay. Sentence fluency? Four. Four. You agree? Yes. You agree with all the fours. And then conventions? Three. Three. So this particular person gave him a 23 out of 24. So that was the highest one. So now I'm going to go back in order and read. Um, I enjoyed reading about Barb Marley through your eyes. I would have liked a few specific awards, honors, and or achievements mentioned to support your various statements. Please see your paper for my additional notes. And I would agree. We talked to um, we talked about that. So this was um, when he wrote this essay. I didn't have any um, inclusion. I just said write it the way that you have learned how to write. Organize it the way that I've taught you. It's going to be your work exclusively. And then I printed the essay. I mailed it off or emailed it off to two other professionals. And then, of course, I, I scored it as well. So in our debrief time, I told him what I thought. Oh, I would have cleaned this up or I would have took this out or I would have made this more clear. And he was just like, nope, it's going to stick like that. That's how I want it to be. I mean, there were some edits. He was like, oh, yeah, I made a mistake. He just didn't edit thoroughly. And we talked about that so um this particular one 20 out of 24. this particular score says very well done i enjoyed this paper watch for informal word usage and make sure you take your time editing and we talked about that right yes. you got to actually spend time editing your paper overall great work strong language and excellent organization now i will say i was very excited that someone else this is not my paper Someone else said excellent organization because I worked so hard on his writing being well organized. Do you want to talk a little bit about um, organizing your writing, especially with you being a budding author? Or maybe like what do you think about or some of your process? 
because I was very excited that someone else noted how well your work, your writing was organized. You want to speak about that for a few minutes? Sure. So I usually take multiple takes in writing when I write any special thing. I'll have a rough draft and then a revised draft and then a final draft, which helps to keep it organized and helps to see my editing process when I'm writing. Okay, great. And then I wrote, this is my score, I wrote great paper, work on tense consistency and variety of sentences. Um, writing could use more details to fully make points that you want. And another score set that as well. So now we're going to ask you guys a few things that um, we could not agree about and see. Let's see if you guys can help us settle the score. So in one of his sentences, it says, Without doubt, reggae and Ja paved a long road for his career in music. And my note was that you need an A in between the without or doubt. Without a doubt, reggae and Ja paved a long road for his career in music. Okay, now tell them what you think. Without doubt. Without doubt. And why? Does that sound better to you? Like, why, why don't you want to add the A? that sounds like the right way so it reads better to him that way and I'm like you need the A um I made that note and another score made that note but there was the third score didn't either didn't catch it so I think I won that A and then what was the other one that we okay so this particular score noted a lot of informal writing so we are going to work on that um this school year you did you had not informal writing but you have informal usage here and so we'll work on that um, I said this too. Okay, so he introduces Nesta Robert Marley was born in Kingston, the capital of Jamaica. Then he goes on that whole paragraph. The next paragraph, several years passed and it was time for Marley to make his own decisions. He met an old guy and that's part of the informal usage. He met an old guy that taught him about Ja and the Rastafarian faith. Soon after, Bart Marley converted to Rastafarianism. And I said, you don't need to call him Bart Marley yet. He hasn't transitioned into that. He should still be Nesta Marley, or you can just say Marley or Mr. Marley. And he knows Bob Marley. So you want to talk a little bit about why you wanted it to say Bob Marley, even though he isn't Bob Marley yet? I don't think I caught that. You didn't catch this one? I, I think I noted that off to you. Okay, so you're saying then it should be Nesta or just Marley? Okay. Well, no, well, I didn't know. <laughs> you didn't catch it? Okay, let me see. What was the other one? I was like, that doesn't sound... Okay, do you guys think the Amer American dream should be in quotations? It says they both were living the American dream until Bob started having his affairs. So why do you think it should be in quotes? Because I like it in quotes. Because he likes it in quotes. Speak up a little louder. Say it again. Because I like it in quotes. That's not a reason <laughs> to violate good old grammar rules because he likes it. So you guys let me know. And then the last one was, where is it where I wanted you to stay consistent with something? Oh, I see it. Okay, the other one was, the last sentence says, the great music legend died at the age of 36 and with 12 living children still alive to hold his name dear. What's wrong with that? You wanted to leave both of those. Do you the see it now? So you have living and you have still alive. So oh, do you need yeah, both? No. No. So how should it read? Choose one. The great music legend died at the age of 36 with children still alive to hold his name dear. That reads so much better. Okay, so I think I won. But that wasn't obvious until I got other people to come in. How was it a contest? <laughs> Not a contest, for real. Um, just we go back and forth with writing. I'm a writer, he's a writer, and we go back and forth between, no, it should say this, it should say this, it should read this way, it's smoother here. And so we need outsiders to come in and um, kind of settle the score some. So I didn't mean a contest. Okay, so the things that, one of the reasons that I... Um, you know, set the paper up this way, I know I mentioned a few reasons earlier in the video, is to kind of write down some things to focus on for the next coming school year. So I wrote those things down. Number one, we're going to work on coordinating conjunction use. Number two, we're going to work on variety of sentences. Number three, his thesis statements were pretty solid, but I want to go a little harder, um, as well as concluding statements, even though you had one 
concluding statement that I thought was amazing. I remember making a note. And then also developing points more, which another, um, another score said that. And then last, like, you know, tense. And tense is difficult. Even myself as a writer, I write in one tense to keep going back and making sure it all lines up and then keep the voice. You comfortable? And then keep the voice um, with it as well. So before we go, do you want to um, just leave them with a little note? Like, let's say another fifth or sixth or seventh grader is watching and their mom is getting them prepped to you know, be able to write a biography or be able to write an essay like how you did? Do you have any tips? Do you have anything you want to say um, in terms of your writing and all that jazz? Look at the camera. Um, I'd say to, I don't think double checking is enough. I think you have to check several times, way more than just twice. And I guess that was a mistake for me because... I still have mistakes after the second time of rechecking my work. Anything else? Or is that like the main thing? The main thing. That's the main thing. Okay, how did you like um, writing your essay? Was it hard? Was it easy? Was it a little challenging? I loved it. Yeah, he likes writing. Um, and we've already talked about how to write biographies, again, writing and rhetoric, and then it was Bob Marley, right? So they have to read a biography pretty much at the, um, for every, every year, and so he had already chose Bob Marley, so that's why... You know, I paired that writing with that biography because it was a book I knew he always would already, excuse me, be reading about. Okay, so I hope this video was helpful. I got a lot of questions about, well, how well could he write after and what did the books really do? So I hope that answers um, the good deal of your questions. If not, go ahead and just drop some questions for me there in the comments and we will do our best. Um, to answer them. You can address me um, as Aliza and address my son as Yalon if you have a specific question um, for either him or I and I'll make sure we get to it. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe. Until next time, shalom. Shalom.